In this world, I mean, both of you guys have uh, I understand what CG is, but CG doesn't usually have 100 mile of winds hitting you directly through most of it. So can you talk about the onset where you're like, all right, I'm ready, start it, go. Uh, I think it was, uh, it was something unlike uh, any of us had really experienced before. It was, I mean, there was times when it was just weeks on end of having these huge fans hit us, 100 mile winds, and also just they also just they threw debris at them. I think they stopped doing that at some point, but but it was you know they were throwing kind of bricks. just bit, just well, bricks, not bricks and there was a bit of brick in there, water. yeah. Um, so it was, uh, I mean, it was very. Um, the fear you see is is real, definitely. There was there wasn't a lot of acting required. You know, it was <laughs> my lingering memory of it, and I used to wake up in the middle of the night. Was when the wind machine started up. It sort of started. It sounds like an air raid siren right. going, and it was like you, everyone would look at each other and go, if "Here we go." Now we'd both we'd, you'd, you'd, we'd, go. we'd be there. We'd be there. Yeah, we'd start cuddling. We'd get in the corner. What's the, what's the key? Is it put, keep the nose down so nothing goes up it, or are you just trying to keep away the there, eyes? There was a few. Can I just, just give us a look? And, and it's not really. Well, you, I, I can't. I mustn't. I can't do that. I I <laughs> try and find anything. I'd put my. I'd sort of end up being like this behind here. Yeah. And, um, yeah. But they, you know, when they put a camera there and they want a, a still close up of you acting and then they start throwing bricks at you it's, it's like it's just survival isn't it and did you guys get a chance to meet any actual storm chasers or how do the, the the process go with understanding how their world worked i mean it, i know it's different pods all together but understanding people who actually want to go into as opposed to get away from or find family for you know do you know one of the things that uh really resonated with me when i went to make the movie was um just after the earthquake in christchurch i remember seeing news footage of ordinary office workers that had gone to work in the morning and their, you know, their world had sort of changed because this massive earthquake had hit, their building had collapsed and they were carrying out their, their colleagues, um, men and women, both going back into the building to rescue them and I remember thinking that, that's who this character is, he's just an ordinary guy that he's, he's asked to sort of step up to the plate and become a hero that, you know, you think, I don't know how I'd respond in that situation but it really stayed in my mind how, you know, it's, I found it quite moving. Do you lay out a map and say, this needs to be destroyed, we need to run across this, or do you let the story take you and try to find opportunities? To me, it always starts with the story. And you know, for Into the Storm, it's a story about two separate groups of people. It's a father who's separated from his son, trying to find his son in this worst tornado outbreak in history and you know like any father you'll do everything you possibly can to try to find where your son is and save him and help him in in this time of need and at the same time you have a group of professional storm chasers and scientists who are trying to learn from these disasters and are actually actively going right towards the tornado so these two separate worlds collide and meet together because of one of these tornadoes and it's always driven by story first and it hap you know the idea of the different types of tornadoes for this movie actually were inspired by YouTube research. There's so much video of real tornadoes that when I saw these real tornadoes, I said, that's unbelievable. There's a fire tornado in Australia. It's real. That, that doesn't seem real. It's, it's real, though. So I said, we've got to incorporate that into our film and then figure out a way to make it work organically to uh, fit the story. Now, in this day and age, you know, back in the day, Twister didn't have as much technology or ways to connect. In this day and age, is it get rid of the Wi-Fi and the cell towers as fast as possible because you need the story to be about them finding each other? Right. Well, interestingly enough, you know, like any situation like that with the electromagnetic storms and interference and so forth, cell phone coverage is sort of, you know, spotty and everybody's calling and you're in a remote area, you know, so there, there are a number of ways you can do that. Or if you're trapped and there's, you know, a barricade so your cell coverage doesn't work, you know, it's, we've all done the logical things to explain why it doesn't work in the movie. Hopefully the audience will be the judge of that. But I think like anything, it is true though, as technology increases, it's harder and harder as a filmmaker to make a movie that relies on lack of communication because it's so easy nowadays to, to call with cell phones. Now in the history of tornadoes, we always kind of have little weird fun Easter eggs, whether it's a witch flying in them or a cow flying around. Is there an Easter egg getting into the story we might want to look for somewhere in there? A little bit of humor maybe somewhere? Yes. That's all I'll say. <laughs> You'll have to see the movie, but yes. <laughs> all right, we look forward to it, sir. Okay. Pleasure. Have a great day. Thank you.